One of the basic requirements for EFS decryption is that you should have the EFS private key of an user who can access the encrypted file. In this video, we will see how to get the private key from Windows. Private keys in Windows are stored as individual files in the file system. If you take the context of EFS, we are looking for an RSA private key. This private key will be stored in the user's roaming profile inside Microsoft Crypto RSA SID directory. The private key will be protected by DP API or the Data Protection API. This is to ensure that only the authorized user is allowed access to the key. There are a few ways of getting the private key in Windows. The basic distinction is whether you are able to log in as the user or you want to do an offline recovery of the private key. If you are able to log in as the user, the easiest way to get the private key is using the Windows Certificate Manager. That way, you don't have to know anything about DP API and simply export the private key with a few clicks. That's what we'll be looking at in this video. There are also other tools available which can help you decrypt a DP API blob and recover the private key. Some of these are uh, Nearsoft Data Protection Decryptor, the CQ Tool Suite, and uh, DP Epic. I'm just making a passing mention about these for completeness. I will be providing the links to these in the video description. Okay, now let's get on to the steps. Now let's see how to get the EFS private key for a user. I'm now logged in as the test user and I will be using the Windows Certificate Manager tool to export the EFS private key. I'll go to certmanager.msc and then navigate to the EFS certificate. I select the certificate, right click, go to all tasks and then click on export. This takes me to the certificate export wizard. Let's go ahead and see what happens. In the second screen, I get an option to export the private key. By default, this will be no, but I'm going to set this as yes. The third screen shows me that it is going to export the private key and certificate in a format called the PFX format. I'm just going to leave this at the defaults and then select next. Since the private key is being exported outside, in the fourth screen, I need to set the password to protect the private key. I'm going to use a one character password because this is just a demo. Next, you have to specify the name that you want to have for the PFX file. Let us call it efs.pfx. In the last screen, I get a summary of options and I click on finish. You can see that this displays a success message. If I go back to my working directory, we can see a PFX file created there. The default asymmetric algorithm used by EFS is RSA 2048. And this PFX file contains both the RSA private key as well as the public key certificate. Again, there is no native tool in Windows to extract the private key from a PFX file. So I'm going to use something called the OpenSSL library. This is a crypto library written in C and it's available on both Windows and Unix. On Windows, it comes with a command line utility called OpenSSL.exe, which kind of wraps around the library's functionality. I'm going to use OpenSSL command line tool to extract the private key from this PFX file. Let me go to the command prompt now and let's take a look at the command that we are going to run. As you can see, it has six parts to it. First is the name of the command itself, which is OpenSSL. And the second part is the format that we are going to work with, which is PKCS12. If you noticed, we exported the certificate in PFX format. So PKCS12 is kind of another name for PFX. You can go to the Wikipedia page for PKCS12 to verify this. So here it says the file name extension for PKCS12 files is either P12 or PFX. Let's look at other relevant information in this page. The PKCS12 is used to commonly bundle the private key with its X509 certificate, which is exactly what we have done here using the certificate manager. Interestingly, we can also find that the PFX format has been criticized for being one of the most complex cryptographic protocols. Thankfully, we have OpenSSL, which can parse this format for us and take out the private key. 
our private key is now embedded inside a pfx file right when i extract it i need to specify what format i want the exported private key to be so if i scroll below i have the answer which says a simpler alternative format to pkcs12 is pem which lists the certificates and possibly private keys as base64 strings the pem is the most common format if you have opened up a private or a public key sometime then most likely you would have seen the pem format back to the command we have covered the third part which is the input and the fourth part which is the output we are taking the input as pfx and the output we want the private key in the pem format parts 5 and 6 are what you would call as output options now option 5 is not nodes but it's actually two words no des when i say no des i am telling openssl not to encrypt the private key with a password the last part is again two words no certs which means you don't want the certificate but you want only the private key now let us run this command and extract the private key in pem format when i run the command i need to give that one character password i used when i exported the pfx file once this is done you will be able to see the private key exported as a pem file you can actually open this pem file using notepad plus plus and view the private key so as we saw in the wikipedia page the private key will be encoded in base64 and you know it is the private key because it clearly says so in the file now that we have the private key let's move on and use this private key to open the locker or in other words use this private key to decrypt the efek